Hello, I'm Graham Fitch and welcome back to my video demonstration on managing stretches from Steinway Hall in London and this illustrates the article I've written for Pianist magazine in issue 88. So in the final part here I'm going to just talk about the attitude of a closed hand as being very important in, in all piano playing. Let me just give you a, a, an illustration here of from Scriabin, it's the prelude, the beginning of the Opus 37 number one prelude. Have a look at my left hand, there's nothing much to see in the right hand. And I hope what you'll notice is my hand is opening and closing. It's never staying stretched out, even though there are quite big stretches here. Now let's just dissect that a little bit. Um, I'm going to just play the left hand by itself now. So it's not a train smash if I start off with both fingers ready. It's not a particularly big stretch. Although my inclination would be to play my thumb and then open my hand after, rather than that. Now my thumb is playing now a G flat. The next note it needs to play is an A flat. So you'd think, okay, rather like that Haydn example we had, let me keep my thumb ready in that position. It seems like a, a reasonable decision, doesn't it? Couldn't be more wrong from the point of view of a really good piano playing because I need to bring my hand back into a closed position for those two notes so that those two fingers are aligned with my arm, I've got my weight behind them. Did you notice there, as soon as I stretched up to my thumb, the rest of my hand followed. It didn't stay stretched out. So if I go back and show you that example again, now that you've seen me explain it, just have a look at the left hand. So it's the idea that where possible the hand remains closed and not open. Famous example, Chopin Opus 10 number no. 1 etude, probably certainly up there with the, the, the most demanding technically in the repertoire. And no, I'm not going to sit and play it. I'll just show you the beginning of it. It looks like... <laughs> and a study in stretches. But if you look at it closely, it's actually an etude in the opposite of how to keep a closed hand whenever possible. If I just give you a little bit of a guided tour of the right hand, um, which is where the difficulty is. So I start off with my thumb on the C, closed hand, move. And that's the grouping I'm interested in is this. Two, three, four, one, move. Two, three, four, one, move my arm. Two, three, four, one. That's a bigger group at the top, longer group. Now the group starts now with a thumb. And if you look at my hand, my thumb is in here, not stretched here. So it's not this. Don't do that. <laughs> now, when obviously I need to be able to join the C, to, to the G. So you see what happens there? The hand opens at the very last moment. On the way up, second finger. And on the way down, the thumb. Just comes out at the very last moment. Let me show you with the etude in A flat opus 25 number one, otherwise known as the harp etude. Uh, again, it looks like, if you look at it on the page, oh, those, all those stretches, the hand appears to be stretched out. Let me just play you a bar or two. I don't know if you could see what I'm doing there, but I'm not uh, keeping any fixed position at all. And this is really important with, with anything. If 
for those of you that teach beginners, when we're teaching five finger positions, we teach mobility so that this is always free and mobile. So similarly here, do you see what's going on there in the hand? The thumb is coming back. Let me show you in the left hand. I don't keep my thumb stretched out. The thumb comes back in to join the body of the hand and actually acts as a brace for the fifth finger. Here, do you see that? When I want a little bit of body in my fifth finger, my thumb can support the fifth finger. If it's stretched out like that, my pinky's got no power behind it at all. There are actually two ways of doing this, moving in this study. One is just using the lateral movements. Let me show you with a lateral movement. Do you see what's going on there? I'm just swinging from side to side with my wrist. The other way of doing it is with circular or elliptical movements. Both are fine. I prefer this way. Do you see what's going on there? There's a downward part of the movement and then an upward. So you end up with a circle or an ellipse. I hope that's given you a few ideas on keeping the hand closed up. Aim for that whenever possible. Uh, certainly a big part of my training, close the hand, don't stretch it. I hope that's helped you and I look forward to seeing you again soon.